Good morning, and it is good to have you with us again as we meet to worship. And as we begin this morning, it was good to come into that place of worship with a good, lively hymn, lifting up the name of Jesus, giving glory to the name of Jesus, because that's what we meet together for, friends. We meet together to lift up the wondrous name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We meet to give him glory. We meet to have fellowship together. And this morning as we gather, let us really come into that place. Let us join together and let us really praise the name of Jesus Christ this morning. For he is indeed worthy of all praise, of all glory, and he is worthy of all we could bring this morning. So let us continually lift up his mighty name. Let us pray. Father God, indeed, as we meet together again on this, this Sunday morning, we have a desire in our hearts to lift up your name. Oh, Father God, we come, we come in to this virtual place of worship, united together, seeking to praise you. And Father, as we come this morning, we seek your mercy. We seek your grace. And we pray, Lord, that indeed you would lift us above our adversity. That you would lift us up above the problems of, that we have day by day. And you would set us this morning anchored to that rock that rock which is Christ, that unshakable, unmovable rock. And Father God, as we worship together this morning, may we meet with you and may our hearts and our minds and our desires change. May we be confronted, Lord, with who we are as we come into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we just offer you this time of worship now, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading is taken from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 16, the new birth. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but can't tell where it comes from and where it goes. So everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he can come down from heaven. That is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man 
be lifted up, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Thanks be to God. Before we expound on the word, I want to spend a moment listening to a well-known hymn. King of Kings, Majesty, God of Heaven living in me and the course says your majesty i can but bow i lay my all before you now let us friends this morning lay our lives before the king Last week we looked at the question, what was the primary purpose of Christ coming into the world? And we saw the answer in John 10.10. 10. Jesus came to give us an abundant life. A more difficult question this morning is what is the primary purpose of the man or woman of God? And it is a question that will be answered depending on where we stand in our spiritual understanding. For me, the primary purpose of the man or woman of God is to make disciples. The pastoral responsibilities are important. The organisational responsibilities are important. But they must all come second to our desire to bring men and women into a saving relationship in Christ. That has to be our priority. Again, Jesus says it in his own words. Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter 
the kingdom of God. The problem today, friends, is that the church consists of such a varied opinion. People within the church has, have such a varied opinion of what is important. For some, the importance is attending church, taking communion, reading the Bible, attending the prayer meeting. The religious man or woman can do all of these things and yet know absolutely nothing about new life in Christ. So this morning as we continue our series, I want to look at the start of the new life. How does this new life begin? How do we be born again? How can we be sure of our entry into the kingdom of heaven? In our reading this morning, it is interesting that Jesus isn't speaking to some heathen. He's not speaking to some unbeliever, someone who has rejected the things of God. Jesus is speaking. He's speaking to a deeply religious man. A man who has devoted himself to the things of, the, things of God. A teacher of the law. Someone whom we would have declared a good living person. Someone whom we would say was a righteous man. Someone who we would most likely look up to. Yet we see that Nicodemus was searching for answers. He was a man who was going through a crisis of faith. And he was seeking answers. He knew that there was something more to life. In his conversation with Jesus, remember he comes secretly. He, he, he comes at night because he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want his way of life to be exposed. He, he doesn't want the other members of the um, Sanhedrin to know that he's searching because he is supposed to be a man of God. And yet, in his conversation with Jesus, we see the true gospel message. We see the reality of the love of God the Father in reaching out to his children. But we see, firstly, in the conversation, Nicodemus had to sense his need. Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus. Nicodemus knew. He knew that Jesus was different. That Jesus was more than just a good teacher, a prophet, or a rabbi. Nicodemus knew that the Lord Jesus Christ had come from God. The evidence was compelling. The, the signs and the miracles and the proof was undeniable. He knew that Jesus was different. One of the problems, one of the problems that we have today in this secular, unbelieving world is that men and women, they refuse to look at the evidence for Christ. They will cast him down immediately as a myth or some madman who had a death wish. Some may Look upon Jesus as a holy man. A man who taught good. A man who had a great moral character. But completely missed the reality that the Lord Jesus Christ was God incarnate. 
that he is the Lord of life and hope. He came to lay down his life for us so that we could have the offer of eternal life. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul is dealing with this argument. And he writes in, in verse, verses 3 to 5, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas and by the twelve. Paul goes on in, in verse 17 to, to, to just lay it on the line. He says, if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If Jesus is anything less than he said he is, then everything is pointless. Life is pointless. We are just blindly going through life uh, in, in a hopeless on purposeless way. But knowing that Jesus is from God, knowing that Jesus is God incarnate, is only part of the realization. Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a knowledgeable man. He knew the Old Testament, the Torah. He knew the, every single concept of the law. According to the law, Nicodemus was blameless. And we're not, we're not told what the conversation, the full, uh, con, the full aspect of the conversation. But we can, we can indeed see from the passage that there was a, a conversation whereby Nicodemus asked questions because we, we can deduce that because of Jesus' response. Jesus answers what had to be a question about salvation. Jesus says, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That is the clear message of the Bible. And yet, it troubled Nicodemus. And it troubled him greatly. Despite all his knowledge, despite all his understanding, he just couldn't, he couldn't understand. He couldn't take it in how someone, a grown man, could almost shrink down to be a baby and to be born again. It just wasn't possible. It, it was beyond his, his mind. It was beyond his, his understanding. And you know, friends, it is pointless. It is pointless to try and work out and try to understand why God should love us or why God should come into our world in the person of Christ to give his life for or sin? To the human mind, it just doesn't make sense. Why would God die for a people who hate him? Why would he give his life for a, a people who, who love to revel in, in, in sin and wickedness? But that's the heart of God. I don't know. Why God would ever love me? I don't know why God would choose me. But what I do know is by faith I am redeemed and I am destined for eternity with Christ. That is the power of faith. But we must understand that we have a problem. We must understand that we are separated from God through sin and that we need a saviour who can deal with that sin. Let's face it, friends. If we don't accept that we're sick, we will not go to the doctor. If we don't accept 
that we need to lose weight, we won't go on a diet. If we don't accept that we're unfit, we won't begin to exercise. It is the same in our spiritual life. If we don't realize that we have a need, if we don't realize that we, that we have sinned, that we are sinners, then we will never seek a savior. That is where we need to be this morning before we can come to Christ for salvation. Is that is that a realization that you have made this morning? Or are you clinging to religion? Are you clinging to working it out on your own? Are you clinging to, to, to try and, trying to make, make yourself right with God by your own works? Friends, that's exactly what Nicodemus was doing. He was living a life of works. He was living a life trusting in, in the works of the law. And he realized that it was uh, not possible. He realized that there was something more. He realized that he had a need. And that Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, was the one who could indeed meet that need. It is only in Christ that we can begin the new life. But not only had Nicodemus to sense his need, Nicodemus had to make a step of faith. In his conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus utters those immortal words, those words that are well known right across the, the world, probably the most well known verse of scripture for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life this friends is the core of the entire gospel this verse contains everything we need to know about the love of God it reveals to us the depth of God's love. A love that is universal. A love that transcends all cultures. Penetrates all religions. Reaches down to every man, woman, boy and girl. And that, friend, includes you and I this morning. And his love was so great that he was willing to give everything so that we could be redeemed. Do we see it, friends? Do we see the greatness of God's love for us? Do we understand the cost of God's love for us? Do we understand what it took Jesus to, to offer us the gift of eternal life? Because it's beyond human comprehension. But there is a responsibility, friends, that rests on us. Because we cannot read John 3.16 without noticing that word, whosoever. And that is the crux of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him. That leaves us, friends, at a crossroads. That leaves us uh, with the understanding that this verse is saying that some will not believe. Some will continue to reject the gospel. Some will continue to reject the love of Christ. Some will continue to turn away from God. And yet, it is the whosoever believes that will have eternal life. And my prayer, friends, is that we all fit into that category this morning. 
We didn't read verse 17 in our reading. But I want to look at it because it is important again to see the reason why Christ came into the world. I don't know what your view of God is. Maybe you look upon God as some sort of vengeful God, some wrathful God, some kind of God who loves to inflict a punishment on his people. If that is the kind of of, of understanding we have of God then we need to read uh, verse 17 again because it says it clearly God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might through him be saved God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Here again we see the love of God. Here again we see the purpose of Christ. He didn't come to condemn. He didn't come to judge. He didn't come to punish. He came to save. He came to offer new life. He came to offer an abundant life. Friends, this morning, we need to realize who Jesus really is. And we need to realize that we are sinners in need of a Savior. And that only Jesus can deal with our sin. And we must respond to Christ's love through faith. That's the gospel message. And as they say, it's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. C, Confess your sin. If we confess our sin, he is uh, faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Friends, that is the most important A, B, C that we will ever learn. And it will, it will transform our lives and, be and begin our new life in Christ. A new life that can begin right now. But a life that will stretch beyond death into eternity with Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the greatness of your love. We thank you for the power in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that that shows us the heart of God. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, that that shows us the greatness of your love for us and how that love reaches down calling men and women to yourself. And Father, we do pray this morning, we do pray, Lord, that indeed you would draw all men to yourself, that the whosoever wills will come to that place where they will experience the abundant life in Christ that they will begin the new life in Christ. And Father, we pray that you will walk with them each and every day of that life. But Father, we do, we do also pray for those who, who will not, those who refuse. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continually convict and the Holy Spirit, Lord, will continually draw them until their minds are opened. And they see the truth 
of your love for them. Father, our prayer is that all men and women come to salvation and we come and we trust in you that you will work in hearts and minds right across this nation and that you will transform situations as indeed uh, we are exposed to your love. Loving God, we do pray for the coming week as we prepare to open our church for worship next Sunday. And we know the, the many things that we need to do. And we thank you, Lord, for all those who are working towards that end. Father, it will be good to be back in this building again to, to worship together. But Father, we pray that as we work to that end, that we are mindful of the difficulties in society through this coronavirus. And we know, Lord, that the governments are talking about spikes again. And Father, we pray that not only do we do everything to prevent that, but that we maintain that prayer against it, Father, because we know the power of prayer. Father, we do pray for all those on our prayer chain, those who have asked for prayer, Father, those who are dealing with various illnesses, some of them serious. Father, you are the giver of life and you are the healer, Lord. And we pray that indeed in each situation this morning, you will touch each and every need, Lord, you will meet. So, Father, we hand all over to you. We give to you everything. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray, Father, that indeed you will make us people who are walking faithfully in Christ. People who are desiring to learn from you and who are desiring to go into the world to make disciples of all nations. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Lord, part us now with your blessing and continually speaking to us each and every day. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.